we're going to talk about logarithmic equations. And um, there are two different types of logarithmic equations also. And again, I call them type 1 and type 2, um, not technical terms, but just to separate them. So two types of exponential equations and two types of logarithmic equations. Now these are very basic um, representations of a logarithmic equation. Um, there's this type 1 I call, and then type 2. I'm just going to do a very easy one. So <clears throat> what's the difference between the two? The type 1 has a logarithmic function on the left and a constant number on the right. And the type 2 logarithmic equations has a single log on the left and a single log on the right, and the bases are the same. So they're different, so I approach them differently depending on the type of logarithmic equation that I have. So I'm going to focus on type 1 in this video, and then I'll have type 2 in the next video. Now there's something that we need to talk about when it comes to... Um, I'm just going to rewrite this in exponential form. When it comes to... Actually, let me just... For example... When it comes to the domain of this, like what are the values that are allowed in x? How, what, what can x be? So if I convert this back into exponential form, right, the base of the log raised to y is equal to x. x represents the outcome of this exponential function, right, if I, convert it, if I put it from logarithmic form to exponential form. And we know that we can never get <clears throat> from an exponential case, if it's just a single positive base to an exponent, I can never get zero, and I can never get a, um, a negative number. You know, even if this exponent were zero, my outcome would not be zero. Two to the zero is one. Even if this exponent were negative, I wouldn't get a negative outcome. A negative exponent, you know, tells me to flip the sign, you know, like two to the negative three or whatever. This is one over two to the positive three, which is one over eight. So still not a negative outcome. It's still a positive outcome. So this value, this number that comes out of this exponential will never be um, zero and will never be negative. So the domain of a basic logarithmic function equation, right, <clears throat> has to be bigger than zero. All positive numbers, but not including zero. So anything that makes a zero or a negative number attached to a logarithmic function doesn't exist. So <clears throat> now when we solve these logarithmic equations, we have to remember that. So we're always going to check our solutions to see if it satisfies that case. When I plug it in, do I get zero or negative? If so, it's not a solution. So it has to be positive when I plug it back in. So, all right, let's do um, type 1 exponential equation. I have a, a few examples for these. Um, <clears throat> and uh, obviously it's a type 1 exponential uh, logarithmic equation because I have a single log on the left and a single constant number on the right. No coefficient in front of log, you know, no number added outside of log. I have a single log on the left, coefficient of 1, and a single constant on the, on the right. When I have this situation, to solve these type 1 logarithmic equations, we're going to convert them to exponential form. Convert to exponential form. I'm just going to say exponent uh, form, just for short. So to convert this into exponential form, I'm going to take the base of the log, raise it to that exponent and set it equal to, in this case, 4x plus 1. And you can see now it's a very basic equation. Once I convert the logarithmic equation from this form into an exponential, it makes it very easy to solve. 2 to the fifth is 32, is equal to 4x plus 1. 4x is equal to, subtract 1 for both sides, 31. x is equal to 31 over 4, which, um, you know, that's my exact answer. Um, again, I want to make sure that you guys, before you um, actually determine that it is a solution, you need to check your solutions and make sure that you don't get a negative or a zero here. So if I were to plug in positive 31 fourths, you know, I'm not going to get zero and I'm not going to get negative. I'm going to get a positive number here. So I don't have a problem with my solution here. So 31 fourths is my in fact, my solution. Now you can always plug it in to make sure and verify that the left side is equal to the right as well. Here's another example of a type 1 exponential uh, logarithmic equation. And how do I know it's uh, type 1? I have a single logarithmic function, and then the rest are just numbers. So what I need to do, though, is can put, it, put in this form where I have a single log on the left and a constant number on the right. So I need to do some algebra first. Subtract 6 from both sides. 2 ln of x is equal to 5 minus 6, which is negative 1. 
divide by 2, I have ln of x is equal to negative 1 half. Right? Now, now I'm in type 1 a logarithmic form, a single logarithmic function. Remember that ln is a log of base e, the natural log, and then I have a constant number on the right. So the way that we solve these type 1 is we convert it into exponential form. I take the base of the log, raise it to this exponent, and set it equal to, in this case, x. So x is equal to e to the negative 1 half, which is 1 over e to the positive 1 half, or 1 over the square root of e. And this is a positive number, so if I plug it in here, I have no problems. Right? I can't have 0 or negative next to a logarithmic function, but this doesn't give me that issue. So this is my solution. Here's another type 1 logarithmic equation. How do I know it's type 1? Well, I have logs on the left and a constant on the right. So what I could do is create the situation where I have a single log on the left and a single constant number on the right. But I do need to use the properties of logs first because I need to combine these two logs together to make it a single log. Now when I'm adding two, uh, two logs that have the same base and I combine them into a single log, I use the product property and so it becomes a single log of the product of the two cases. Um, I'm going to foil this out, x squared outer plus 4x plus 6x plus 10x and then plus 24 is equal to 1. And now I have that logarithmic equation where I have a single log on the left and a constant number on the right. So I'm going to type 1 logarithmic equation, convert it into exponential by taking the base of the log, raising it to this exponent, and setting it equal to all of this, in this case, x squared plus 10x plus 24. <clears throat> um, now, it's, now it's an actual basic um, quadratic equation. This is 3 to the 1, which is 3. So a quadratic equation, I'm going to set equal to 0. So I'm subtracting 3 from both sides. And now I have a basic exponent of uh, quadratic equation. And this is a nice one because it factors. So now I can say I get two solutions, negative 7 and negative 3. But before I claim it's a solution, I need to check it and make sure that when I plug them into, I'm going to go back to the original. When I plug them back up here, I don't get a negative or 0. I don't get a negative or 0. So if I plug in negative 7, I get a negative value here. Negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. I'm not allowed to have a negative attached to a log. I also get negative here. This is not a solution. I'm not allowed to have negatives or zeros next to a log, right, attached to a log. If I plug in negative 3, though, negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3, and negative 3 <clears throat> plus 4 is positive 1, no problem with that one. This is my answer. And if you plug it in, you'll see that it actually gives you a true statement. So again, always check your solution for logarithmic equations. One more. This is a nice one. How do I know this is type 1? Well, I got three different logs over here. So you know what? Let me bring them together. Properties of logs, again, I'm going to multiply these two. Can I foil this out? x minus 6 times x minus 4. x squared <clears throat> minus 10x plus 24. And then bring this down, minus log base 2 of x is equal to 2. Now I have to bring these together. <clears throat> and anytime I'm subtracting two logs of the same base, then it becomes the quotient property. It becomes a single log of a quotient. And now you can see that this is a type 1 logarithmic equation. I have a single log on the left, even though all this looks ugly. This is still a single log on the left and a constant number on the right. So I'm going to do the same thing that I've been doing. I take the base of the log and I raise it to this exponent, and I set it equal to all of this, x squared minus 10x plus 24, all over x. And now it's an you know, equation I've seen before in algebra. It's a rational equation um, that I'm going to solve, uh, or that I can solve for x. 2 to the, maybe I'll bring it to the next page, so I have some space, x squared minus 10x. <clears throat> so x squared minus 10x plus 24 over x is equal to 4, right? 2 to the second power is 4. All right. <clears throat> now, how do I solve this? <clears throat> um, I guess there are a couple ways you could do this. Um, since it's a rational equation, we're going to do it like this. We're going to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to bring this 4 over. x squared minus 10x plus 24 all over x. 
minus 4 is equal to 0. <clears throat> and then, of course, when we solve rational equations, we need a common denominator. This is not a bad denominator. This needs an x and an x, right? So then when I combine the two, right, my denominator is x. On the top, I get x squared minus 10x minus 4x minus 14x and then plus 24 equal to 0. <clears throat> now, uh, solving this rational equation, you know that x can't be 0, right? Because then I get a, a 0 on the bottom of a fraction, which is not allowed. Um, so multiplying both sides by x, it really just kind of goes back to this quadratic equation. Um, let me see, does this factor? <clears throat> Excuse me. So 6 and 4, 8 and 3, 12 and 2. So it does. So I get an x minus 12 and an x minus 2, right? Negative 12 times negative 2 is positive 24, and then I get that negative 14 in the middle. So I get two solutions, positive 12 and positive 2. But again, this came from a quadratic, uh, sorry, this came from a, uh, where'd it go, logarithmic equation. So I need to check my solutions and make sure that when I plug them into to x's, I don't get zeros or negatives next to my logs. So I'm going to check, let's check 12 first. When I plug 12 in here, positive, no problem. Plug 12 in here, positive, no problem. Plug 12 in here, positive, no problem. This is one of my solutions. Let's check 2. When I plug 2 in here, ah, 2 minus 6 is negative. I can't have negative. So I don't even care about the rest, whether it works or not. This one can't, none of them can be negative. So 2 is out. 2 is not part of my solution set. So my solution only has 12 in it. Now you might see um, a solution set. You might be asked to do a solution set, which looks like this. The set contains this solution, in this case, only 12. Two, uh, negative 2 is called an extra, is it not? No, positive 2 is called an extraneous solution. It is a solution when you solve it, but we plug it back in, it won't work. So it's out. Sometimes you'll get one of these that works. Sometimes both of them will work. Sometimes none of them will work. And you might get no solution. It happens. 